Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So now we have the task of evaluating the mean distance r bar for a given uh, probability distribution, right? That's kind of straightforward. We have an interpretation. The interpretation is that there is a linear city. It start as, starts at the origin. It goes out till a finite radius capital R, right? And um, we just want to understand what is mean distance, right? So what is the mean distance of, you know, at which a marker, location marker will be found going out from the, uh, you know, origin, right? So we want the first moment R bar, right? So we have a probability PR that we know we are going to be able to, you know, uh, see a location marker, observe a location marker, and this is given as uh, k to the power, k e to the power minus lambda R, and k we have now evaluated is lambda over one minus exponential to the power minus lambda capital R, so times e to the power minus lambda small r. So okay, let's move forward. So we have r bar, which is given as something we are very well aware of, 0 to r, small r, pr, dr, right? And I have, uh, I'm going to try to write down, uh, I'm going to write down uh, pr lambda e to the power minus lambda small r over 1 minus e to the power minus lambda capital R dr. I am going to take everything that is not a function of small r which is the variable over which we are integrating outside the integration uh, function right. So let us do that. So I have lambda over 1 minus e to the power minus lambda capital R careful that you know, in the denominator, we have capital R. Capital R is fixed. So the radius of the city is fixed, right? So integration 0 to R, R to the power minus lambda R dr. This is something we did in the last uh, lecture. So we are going to do it slightly uh, quickly. So you can look at the last lecture and, and, and follow through with this integration. This is done by applying integration by parts by parts, right? So we uh, designate uh, first and second functions, so we rank them. And you know, we know that integration by parts is uh, nothing but some, if you have an integral with a function of r times a function of g, uh, you know, uh, function f of r, function g of r multiplied with each other, and you must integrate uh, them with respect to r, uh, what you have is f of r gr dr minus um, integral del f by del r multiplied by integral gr dr whole thing integrated with respect to r. Okay, so I'm going to simply apply this formula here. Um, okay, so I have lambda over 1 minus exponential minus lambda r sitting outside. So I have r sitting as is to the power minus lambda r uh, integrated with respect to r. So I have the following evaluated between 0 and r minus integral del r by del r is just 1 times e to the power minus lambda r over minus lambda dr, okay. So this is the second component and I'm going to just keep solving this.
Okay, so I'm going to take it to the next page as is. I'm going to try my best. So we have, uh, okay, so we have R bar equals, okay, I'm going to go to the previous page a little bit and follow through. So I have, um, one minus, um, sorry, I did a, I, I made a mistake here. So I think this R was supposed to be inside here. So this R is inside here. So you have a capital R. Uh, so you have a capital R here is zero sitting out here. So this becomes simpler. Sorry about the fumble. So you have uh, lambda over one minus e to the power minus lambda R times uh, r times e to the power minus lambda r over minus lambda uh, minus just a zero. So that's the first component. Minus the second component is look like, going to look like the following e to the power minus lambda r over lambda squared minus e to the power minus lambda into zero over lambda squared. Okay. So I have uh, basically R bar given as lambda over one minus exponential to minus lambda R times, uh, we, are, we are going to have uh, one minus exponential minus lambda R, one plus lambda R over lambda, which can be further simplified. So R bar can be further simplified as uh, 1 over lambda minus r e to the power minus lambda capital R divided by 1 minus e to the power minus lambda r. And this representation is particularly useful because if you recall from the previous lecture, for an exponential distribution with infinite radius, when r was capital uh, you know, uh, uh, capital R was infinity, uh, the exponential distribution would have given me a mean value which is exactly equal to 1 over lambda. This is something that we saw last time. And now what happens when R is a positive, uh, you know, uh, 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 R is a finite positive value, I have 1 over lambda minus a an entity which is given as what you see on your screen. And this entity is going to be a positive number. So what I'm saying is that the mean distance with a finite radius city is going to be smaller than the mean distance that we see with infinite for an infinite radius city, which makes sense. That means that, you know, when I have an infinite radius city, I'm going to have a larger mean distance than if I were to have a, uh, uh, you know, a uh, 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 slightly lower, uh, you know, uh, sort of finite sort of city, which is which is only as big enough, right? Right. So of course, you know. So so an exercise that naturally fa follows an exercise exercise that naturally follows is to evaluate is to evaluate or analyze the relationship the relationship uh, between between r bar and this finite radius of the city r. Okay, so now I'm going to sort of uh, ask you to stop for five minutes and evaluate this relationship. Okay, so I want you to stop for five minutes. Okay, stop for five minutes. You can pause this video for five minutes and evaluate this value and then we'll come back and then uh, you know, uh, we will uh, resolve the matter. Okay, uh, welcome back from the break. Uh, we had given us a, ourselves an exercise to evaluate R bar, that is the mean distance, first moment of our spatial exponential distribution interpretation. Um, we wanted to see how this R bar would depend on the finiteness of the city. 
So this capital R, if it goes to infinity, well, that's an infinite city, that's an infinitely large linear city. And as soon as you restrict it to, let's say, 100 kilometers, a 150 kilometers, I mean, you have a, uh, a more realistic situation. But from the perspective or, or, or point of view of a uh, spatial distribution, it's a finite city that we are trying to model. So we wanted to understand how would R bar depend on uh, capital R. What you see on your screen is a plot of the R bar value as we change uh, the value R. And that one thing that we have discussed, there are two variables in this distribution. One is lambda, which is the rate of occurrence of location markers in the city. The second is the, the, the extent of the city itself, which is capital R. So what do I do? I can fix the value of lambda. I can vary r, right? So I can fix lambda, fix lambda. Let's say lambda is fixed at 0.1, right? Then I can vary the value of capital R. Let's say we can go from 10 kilometers to 20 kilometers to 30 kilometers to 40 to 50 to 60. And all the way, let's say we go to 200. So we have these 20 unique value of capital R. And what we can do is we can simply sort of, you know, uh, 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 throw in or fill in uh, R bar given the formula that we derived in the, uh, before the break, right? So, so we can do that. So we can get, we can get R bar from the formula that we derived in the previous, uh, you know, on the previous slide. And then we can, we can plot them, right? I mean, we have R bar on the x, on the y axis, we have r on the x axis, and we can see the relationship, okay? That's one way of doing it. The other way is that I have a mathematical relationship between r bar and uh, capital R. So I have r bar as a function of r lambda, and you know, it's an exponential form and, and everything that we saw in the previous, on the previous slide. But you know, we can simply, you know, uh, uh, we can say alternatively, alternatively, we can simply derive del R bar by del R, which automatically by definition, you know, uh, uh, restricts d lambda equal to zero. So lambda is kept fixed, which I was doing manually when I was doing it on Excel, numerically drawing the plot. But I can do it using a, uh, you know, uh, the differentiation operator. And then I can sort of understand whether I find del R bar by del R to be a positive entity, a negative entity, or you know, maybe, maybe even zero, maybe there's no change when R value changes. What do we see in the graph? We see that, you know, when we fix lambda as at point one, so there is no change in lambda value as we change the capital R value on the X axis, lambda is kept fixed at point one, R bar seems to be increasing according to the yellow line, the yellow line, which looks like an exponential, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, inverse of an exponential increase, right? So the increase, there is, there is, R bar is increasing in R, but at a decreasing rate, okay? And it is more clear as you move to a higher value of, of, of lambda, let's say we move to lambda equals 0.5, from lambda equals 0.1 to lambda equals 0.5, you see that R bar still increases as, as R goes up, but after a certain level, let's say around 11 kilometers, the change in R bar tends to be almost zero, right? So it attains a maximum value of two, right? And then it sort of, you know, uh, 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 goes to zero. So it doesn't matter whether my city is, you know, uh, 11 kilometers big, uh, or, you know, has a radius of 20 kilometers or 200 kilometers, you know, the average distance, uh, you know, at which a location marker may be found or a distance at which I will, on average, uh, you know, I can expect to see a location marker will be two kilometers. That's the uh, physical interpretation of this, uh, of this uh, exponential distribution based relationship between R bar and R. So what have we done till now? We have adapted the exponential distribution, which models time between, uh, you know, independently and regularly occurring events to a space, uh, a spatial domain, right? So now our adapted interpretation of 
this exponential distribution is to observe location markers away from origin for a linear city of a finite radius capital R, right? So we have first adapted that. Second, in the definition of this exponential distribution, it's slightly different from what it was in the traditional case of time, uh, you, know, uh, you know, time between events interpretation. We had a new parameter called k. We evaluated what this k was. We analyzed what k was. And the th as third step, as a third step, what we have done is we have evaluated the first moment of uh, you know, uh, 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 of this spatial, uh, you know, uh, spatial exponential distribution. So what is the next step? The sec next step is obviously the, uh, the second moment, but now we will study second moment that is the variation through entropy. So once we have a spatially delineated, uh, you know, a distance based exponential distribution, we are going to now as the next step, which I'm going to call as step three, figure out what is spatial entropy for this example of a linear city having radius capital R and the probability of observing location markers at distance small r from origin given as pr equals lambda over 1 minus exponential minus lambda capital R times exponential minus lambda R. Okay, now I have a spatial exponential distribution, spatially delineated where distance, space, Right, we study distance is the most fundamental entity of understanding, uh, you know, or characterizing phenomena over space. So now we have a distribution which is, uh, you know, characterized by that distance and distance goes from origin and we know that this radius, this distance r can only go as far as the maximum radius of this, uh, of this linear city under, under consideration. So then, you know, uh, what would be spatial entropy? Well, it will be capital E equals minus integration goes from 0 to R PR times log of PR this definition we have studied in the previous lecture I'm just writing it again right and uh, all right so once we know that we can then expand it by putting the value of PR that we have figured out in this lecture so we have 0 to r with a negative sign, right? k, which is lambda over 1 minus exponential minus lambda capital R times exponential minus lambda small r multiplied by the log of this entire entity. So log lambda 1 minus exponential lambda r dr. Okay, so now what is this entropy a function of? So first of all, it's again, it again depends on lambda, but lambda is the rate of occurrence, it's a dist it's distribution parameter, but the other more critical thing that it depends on is the size of the city, the maximum radius that we provide for studying this city. So we say this entropy being a function of r, we call it er, we call it er, okay. And we can show, we can show this ER, it has a little bit of a, uh, you know, a, a complicated uh, mathematical formulation, but it has a very interesting physical formulation. So that, that, that is something that we'll see now. It is one plus log one over lambda plus log uh, one minus is upon minus lambda R minus lambda r to the power minus lambda r over 1 minus lambda r. Now, pay attention to these components with little bit of cost, with little bit of attention. So let's see. So in the green square bracket, I have a term which is 
quite complicated, right? It is log of 1 minus exponential minus lambda r minus lambda r exponential minus lambda r over a complicated denominator. But what's outside this green bracket is 1 over log 1 over lambda. So 1 over lambda, if you remember, is exactly equal to the standard deviation of, of a exponential distribution when r could go to infinity. So if capital R were infinity, what we are looking at here is that the first term is equal to 1 plus log of st, which is nothing but e with r, capital R being set to infinity. So what I am looking at is the entropy of, you know, uh, 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 of uh, of a linear city, which is the which is, which can be written as the entropy of an infinitely large city plus an entity, which is a function again of lambda and r. Right. So every time, I mean, there is a recurring pattern here that you know the functional understanding of how different moments for the spatial uh, you know distribution. Uh, depends is critically this radius of the monocentric city uh, that we are uh, that we are looking at. So I'm just going to say that you know if you are if you feel confused about this e infinity, well you can always go back to the previous lecture and uh, so we can say we showed this we showed this in the previous lecture for. A for an exponential distribution. Okay, and it turns out as a as a as a pointer as a note. I'm just gonna say that it turns out that E infinity, which is the entropy of an infinitely large linear city, is less than or equal to this finitely sized monocentric city. The center obviously is the, you know, uh, it obviously has a has an origin and it has a uh, finite radius capital R, okay. So the entropy, the variation of how, you know, these location markers would, ob would be observed over space would, would be higher, uh, you know, in a finite space than if my space in my then my con, then if my constraint of the size of the city was relaxed and it was allowed to expand uh, infinitely okay so the entropy of a smaller city with sort of equal content you know, of equal number of markers to appear over space uh, the variation at which you are going to see these markers will be realized at a higher level than if the city was larger okay so we we right away get an interpretation of what to expect for things like population density, for real estate prices uh, in, in a large city versus a, uh, a, a small city, given, given that lambda is held constant, right? So here, lambda you can think of is a, is a control parameter of you know, how frequently can you see a marker. So how, what's the interpretation in the real world? Well, you can think of it as the level of economic activity, right? As the total population that I, uh, you know, I, I expect in the city. So if, I, if it's a city of a 2 million population and if we, if we change the size of the city, how will the entropy change? So it's kind of logical to think that I'm gonna fit a lot of stuff, a lot of content in a smaller space, I probably will see a lot of, uh, you know, kind of higher variation. All right, so as a next step, we will define, so, so till now, Till now we have, before we go to the next step, I mean we have ER, we have a formulation for ER. We know that ER is E infinity plus some stuff, okay? And this some stuff is a function of lambda and R, all right? We understand that now, okay? So now, uh, you know, as a next step, I'm gonna call it step four, we are going to define the uh, difference uh, difference between 
entropy levels entropy levels um, at finite ra uh, 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 radius r and with r approaching infinity. So, I am just saying E difference E diff equals E r minus E infinity which clearly from the first equation that I have written is nothing but some stuff right this some stuff which is a function of lambda and r. So, if I were to go on to the previous uh, slide I can actually write down the formulation of this uh, of this uh, remainder uh, you know which is a function of lambda and r and it will come out to be um, lambda e to the power minus lambda r uh, times r divided by 1 minus to the power minus lambda r minus log 1 minus lambda r ok. What is this difference really capturing? It is the distance of variation ok. Now, the second moment how different is the variation captured by an infinitely large city and the, a city which has a finite radius r. So, it is the difference in the second moment measure for a finite city relative to a infinitely large city. And I had said that E infinity is usually lesser than uh, E r and we also sort of covered uh, you know we just covered a, uh, and phys a physical interpretation of the same. You can show you can show that del E diff by del r. So, whenever I do this uh, whenever whenever I use the differential uh, operator what I am doing is I am fixing the other parameter which is lambda right. So, I am I am trying to you know create an understanding of uh, what is the impact of this capital radius r and it turns out that this is less than uh, 0. So, that means as I increase the size of my city I get closer and closer to the entropy levels of an infinitely large city ok. And what is going to be interesting for us as a next step right. So, I am going to say step 5 and I am going to cover it in 2 minutes, uh, but what is going to be interesting is the proportion is the proportion of proportion of variation or variability captured by a finite city finitely sized city relative to an infinitely sized city infinite radius city city. So, what I am going to be interested in going forward is to figure out this proportion E r minus E infinity divided by E r ok. So, I am I am normalizing for the level of E r. So, you know I need to sort of create a percentage or a proportion to be able to normalize for the level of entropy that I am studying. So, if I have a city which is 50 kilometers uh, you know uh, wide from the origin then I want to sort of make sure that I am when I am comparing that with a 100 kilometer city I am not you know I am not comparing apples and oranges I am creating a proportion to normalize uh, if, you know this difference by uh, you know uh, the level of entropy that I began with ok. So, I am trying to see what is the extent or how what is the distance between the entropy that I uh, I would get if I had all the space I wanted versus if I have a smaller space right. What would be a uh, a good uh, an optimal size or appropriate size of a city if I wanted most of the stuff most of the distribution in population the way population is spread out the prices are spread out and all that if I had no space constraint whatsoever right. So, this sort of comes closer to some kind of a regional policy or regional planning exercise where policy makers might want to understand where should they draw a boundary of a city right. Where should we stop national capital territory of Delhi? where should we stop you know a coastal city like Mumbai which can only expand in one direction right. So, so this idea of spatial entropy and this metric 
E diff by E R specifically provides a policy instrument to do that. Before I move forward in that direction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at E diff, uh, this difference and E R a little bit more closely. So let's go and do that. So first of all, I'm looking at E R. So I'm sorry about the notational uh, goof up. These are all E sub R plotted as a function of capital R. So this is the entropy captured as I increase the size of the city. So the entropy captured goes up as we, uh, you know, increase the size of the city, whereas this difference sort of comes down. So del E diff by del R, as I said, will be a negative entity, right? So this is nothing but del E diff by del R less than zero entity. Right. So what it shows me is that as I increase the size of the city, the difference between what would be the variation in, 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 in an infinitely large city, how would it uh, start to fall down? And of course, you again see, uh, you know, either an exponential uh, functions shape when you see these curves or you see the inverse of it. Right. So, so the shape is all determined by the analytical functional form of the distribution that we began with. So if we begin with a different distribution, let's say we began with a normal distribution, a truncated normal distribution, a Poisson distribution, right, a beta distribution, then all of these results will automatically change according to how the, you know, different parameters of those distributions behave or lend to the behavior of the distribution itself. Okay. So having said that, uh, you know, we have understood, uh, you know, uh, E sub R, E difference. Now we are going to, we wanted to understand a little bit more about this proportion, uh, H diff or E diff over uh, E R uh, to be able to understand, uh, you know, an appropriate size of a city. So it turns out that I have a functional form for the, you know, uh, for uh, 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 e diff, which is a difference between a finitely sized linear city and an infinitely sized linear city and the entropies between the two, uh, normalized by the level of entropy for this uh, finitely sized city. And I had, I had said, you know, we have, we have both of these, the numerator as well as nominator, they are both functions of, they are both functions of lambda and r. Right. We basically want to understand how much, how close is a finitely, a finitely sized city is to a infinitely sized city in terms of the variation of a given interest, uh, you know, metric of interest if, you know, we change the radius of the city itself. So if we expand the city, how much closer am I going to get to, uh, you know, uh, to an infinitely large city as well. So I'm going to call this step five. And in this step five, I'm going to set, set this ratio equals 0 0.05 or 5%. So this allows for the difference between the infinitely large city and the finite city to be only 5%. So that means, that means that I am looking at a situation, a setting, a setting where linear city with radius capital R captures 95% variation relative to A, uh, 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 relative to A to an infinitely, to an infinitely large monocentric city okay so what do i so what can i do going forward okay so i have basically a function of lambda and r and i'm setting it to be 0 0.05 what i can really do is that i can actually set lambda let me set lambda equals 0.1 and then I can take an inverse of this function and I can figure out the value of r, which is the radius. I can back out the radius of a city. 
I can back out the radius of a city that will capture 95% of variation as far as the entropy is concerned relative to an infinitely large city. Okay, so if I can attain this radius, if I can attain this radius given the lambda value, I can achieve all the variation I want if I had no constraint of space. So constraint of space by itself can be realistically, uh, you know, given some kind of a boundedness, right? So it may not be a very large constraint. So if R 0.95 or R 95% turns out to be a realistic value, let's say within 100 kilometers, 200 kilometers, well, we can realistically build such a city which we think will encompass all you know, economic activity, living standards as far as, you know, if they are considered as random variables to be able to be contained within that, uh, within that city, right? So this will be nothing but L inverse of 0 0.05 being with lambda set as 0.1, okay? And, and, and we can, you know, uh, uh, we can, we can figure that out uh, with a graph. So here again, I have E diff by E R, E diff by E R, I'm going to focus on, I am going to focus on uh, with uh, the case where I fix lambda equals 0.1, okay? So let me fix lambda to be equal to 0.1 and uh, I'm going to look at the yellow line and what I see here is if you look at E diff by E sub R, E diff by E R, it is actually falling beyond a given distance from the origin. And this value keeps falling and, and comes to this point of point zero, uh, point zero 0.05, which is the value of my interest at a distance of around 33 kilometers. So R 95% or 0.95 turns out to be 33 kilometers. What this means is that given lambda equals 0.1, the distance from origin, origin equals 33 kilometers is considered, is considered an appropriate, appropriate regional boundary boundary for a monocentric city, right? And what is the definition of this appropriateness of this regional boundary? That it is able to capture 95% of the variation, right? Of course, with lambda values being different, if, if lambda goes up, you see that R 0.95 is drastically smaller, right? So a lot can be done, uh, you know, uh, with smaller cities as well. So the, it's not all is lost with smaller towns and cities, right? But if lambda is smaller, you are going to expect, uh, you know, you can expect a higher, uh, you know, uh, sort of a larger distance or larger requir a requirement of a larger, uh, you know, spatial scope of a city to be able to, you know, encompass uh, 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 the variation uh, that one would like, right? So this is for the case where probably lambda will be probably much, much less than point one, right? So the idea is that, you know, schematically, if you see, I start at the origin, uh, my R stops here, I, the R could go till infinity. Uh, but the idea is that, you know, uh, there comes a value of capital R at 33 kilometers, where, you know, ER is actually 0.95, which is 95% of E infinity. Okay. Um, now, uh, as a as an exercise, you know, I'm going to sort of ask you uh, 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 to, uh, you know, uh, to, to figure out the radius of a monocentric city that captures 99% of the variation. So I'm going to make it stricter. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say figure out, uh, you know, uh, R point, uh, you know, 99 such that E diff by E R equals 0 0.01, you can set lambda equals 0.1, right? And you should figure out what for R 0.99 is, uh, you know, 
uh, in the next uh, three minutes. Okay, uh, so I will tell you R after I discuss this little schematic in front of us. So what we are looking at here are different cities, uh, you know, a spatial map of different cities, including Jakarta, Paris, Moscow, Shanghai, Berlin, New York, and London. And what you see interestingly is that many of these cities, if not all, actually have something like a center. And around this center, the city sort of distributes itself in a way that could be explained as an exponential decline in, let's say, population density or trade, you know, uh, some kind of uh, economic activity, maybe groundwater depletion, right? You might see a lot of depletion around the center and then that might actually becomes better as you move away from the city into the heartlands, right? So, so, so you see a similar shape for Shanghai, you know, uh, of course, the axis at which you want to analyze these things uh, can be different. Uh, but the model that we are studying here can be useful uh, to understand or characterize the spatial spread of uh, real world cities. Coming back to the question, well, the, the value of R.99, where if you wanted to capture 99% entropy, uh, which I had set for you uh, a minute ago, well, it's going to be 53 kilometers. So interestingly, you know, while R.95 was 33 kilometers, you would have to go out 20 kilometers more, which is a lot of space if you think about it on land, if you were to go from 95% to 99%, you know, uh, uh, variation of a city. So that's about it. I hope uh, you enjoyed this exposition of spatial entropy, use of spatial entropy, entropy for regional planning to understand, characterize cities uh, around us. Um, thank you very much. Lecture.